Hello and welcome to the Football English podcast in collaboration with World Football Index, a unique mix of fandom and journalism. Footway English is your one-stop shop for all things Venezuelan football in the English language, from the men's to the women's and the domestic leagues to the national teams. Today we are joined by Diego Atuesta of Transfer Room. He handles the commercial side of things in the Americas. And the reason we have Diego on today is to discuss Transfer Room's new agreement partnership deal with Liga Footway and Liga Footway 2, which will see all 31 professional teams in Venezuela on the platform and active from the next international transfer window. Diego, thank you for joining us. How are you? Hi, Jordan. Everything all right? How are you doing? All good. Thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I wanted to to ask with... Uh, I wanted to open with, sorry, how France Room and, and Venezuelan football became partners in the first place. Obviously, it developed with Carabobo and Caracas, um, but has progressed quite substantially since then. Could you take us through how all of this came about? Sure, Jordan. Thanks for the for the invite. Happy to be here with you. Um, it started, I mean, we, we've been working on on, uh, on Venezuela for quite a long while. First communication was, was with Manuel um, from, from the league. Um, that was actually not done by me, but it was done by I knew Manuel from, from a past job, but another colleague of mine had spoken to, to Manuel about this. Manuel knew about Transfer Room. He had the idea that he wanted to join, but then uh, he needed to be prepared for it. So um, it then went quiet. When I joined, I spoke to Manuel again. Um, so I went directly to the league. That was the first approach. Uh, Manuel said they definitely wanted to join, but again, it wasn't the right timing. So we pushed that conversation uh, another year, probably. Um, and then... I think there, there were two key points here. One was uh, Carabobo's free trial. Carabobo had a free trial with uh, Salvatore Simeone using the the, the the platform very well on the, the free trial month that he had. He he had used Transroom before when he used to work at Leeds. He used it pretty well. And actually during that month, he got the chance to bring uh, Bagayoko uh, through trans. Through, we, we talk about facilitating deals, Jordan, here in Transroom. We, we we play a role in a, in, in a deal. We're not doing the deals. The deals are not done in the platform, but we play a role. So we play the role in in, uh, in Bagayoko coming to play in, uh, in, in Venezuela. Um, and then the other bit was I met uh, Philip uh, from Caracas uh, in Medellin. Um, and... Uh, and we had a long chat about this. He liked the product. Uh, he came to one of the events. He also had a quick trial, and he very quickly realized uh, this was something that could could help them a lot. So Caracas was the first stop to join, and uh, Philip was key. Uh, the fact that we had a success story with Bagajoko already working, uh, uh, playing in Venezuela, plus Philip's comments and and his idea of the events, I think those those were the the two key parts uh, to, to to start a conversation again with Manuel and and, uh, and end up with, uh, with a league deal. Excellent. And the fact that sort of Caracas had that uh, exclusivity, if you like, within Venezuela, um, being the only Venezuelan club using it on a full-time basis prior to the league, uh, and now the league having it yeah, in in full, there's like a bit of competition of, of Caracas being the exclusive and now the league having it all. But a lot of onus um, on getting the most out of this uh, platform is how the clubs individually use it. As um, as the service provider, how how will Chancer Room assist the clubs in making the most of this platform? Because international recruitment in Venezuela can be can be very hit and miss. Um, it's for various reasons, there's a limit um, on players, what area of the world players are going to come to realistically to, to Venezuela. Uh, historically, it's hired from the other countries in the Americas. Also, uh, there's a, a reluctance of some clubs to bring in non-Spanish speakers or particularly bring in players from Europe, for example, because of the change in, in lifestyle, the change in culture. Um, how can Transfer Room facilitate clubs to use this platform intelligently? So, so first, you're the, on your first point on Caracas being the only one at the beginning, and then and then the other ones joining. I think I think the main problem, and, and we've discussed this in length with 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 everyone in, in Venezuela. The main problem the Venezuela league has right now is they need to sell more players, and and they they have this problem as a whole. It's not a problem uh, in Colombia. They, they will say I'm Colombian, by the way, 
And in Colombia, they will say, everybody will say we want to sell more players, but then there's some clubs that do sell. In Venezuela, it's, it's a problem that, that goes across all teams. They want to sell more players. The talent is there, but then the exposure is not getting there. And there's some kind of, of blockers that, 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 that for, for this happening. I believe that the fact how Manuel saw it and, and bringing on the whole league and giving exposure to the whole league, it's the best way. I actually think if I was a club and I see that another club does a deal, I would be happy for it, it's, even though it's competition, right? But I will be happy because the ecosystem is starting to move. So I think one key point here is to start looking at this as a whole ecosystem in Venezuela. The owners of the club start looking at this as an ecosystem and not individually. They need to compete as a Venezuelan brand at the beginning, and then they will uh, earn their money when, when, when they sell their players. But the Venezuelan brand has to grow as a whole at the beginning. So th- I, w- I wanted to, to, to make that point on on, on mm-hmm. that that you mentioned and then i fully agree we... by the way the visibility is is key um and hopefully going on transfer room is is something that aids this visibility because as someone that sort of sits both sides of the fence um a lot of the feedback that i've had in this calendar year uh around the world is is that um there's a reluctance to sign players from venezuela this year specifically due to the lack of visibility the lack of of data and the lack of um transferable data so obviously league of football has been with opta this year and the data opta provide is is very very good um in my opinion far more exhaustive than y scout for example but the problem is um clubs are using y scout and they can't reliably cross-reference data from one platform to another so the visibility or the lack of visibility has been a real real issue this year agreed agreed and it's it's been something discussed again with with, with the clubs we we will bring different kind of visibility. Opta will give you a lot of data points. Y Scout will give you range, I would say, because a lot of clubs use it. Not 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 the depth of the data that, that of Opta, but the range of clubs using it. Plus the video. Um, it, that's what 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 Huddle and 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 Y Scout will give you. And what we give you is another side of it. We we, we people don't buy Transform to analyze players. That's that's mm-hmm. what other platforms are for. You buy Transform to know in real time what other clubs are looking for and to be able to receive offers from different different places. So going back to your, your question about how we're going to help, I think we can help in two sides. One is the recruitment bit, and we've seen that it can happen. We've seen a very strange case for Venezuela, like like, like a Bagadioco coming. I think there, there, there are players that are out there and that will be willing to come to, to, to South America and to Venezuela. It, it, it's just a matter of how traditionally uh, the football markets work. Normally, they are the, the football markets are prisoners of how they normally work. They will have a set of contacts and they will move and I'll bring this Argentinian, I'll bring this Colombian, I'll send the players to Peru or to Panama, right? And 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 that keeps that's the culture and changing a culture is very very difficult. But then this is where technology can disrupt. This is where with technology you suddenly land on a platform and we've seen the reaction of many of the clubs when we onboard them. And they can't believe there's 700 clubs connected in one same place and that they're looking and they're seeing what club is, is, is looking for what player. Then the next level of the problem is, do those clubs need your player? And that's, that's something we can't guarantee. You're going to have the option to know who's, who's looking for what and offer the players. But then if, it's, if it happens or not, well, it has to be a quality player and you need to, you need to, you need to make the business, right? But I think we're going to help clubs recruit, we're going to help clubs sell, and we're going to have help clubs with uh, visibility. And in terms of, of Venezuela specifically, um, obviously, as a football fan yourself and, and, and neighbour to Venezuela in the sense of being Colombian, um, do you see, with, with a baseline knowledge of Venezuelan football, do you see transfer room facilitating more on the outgoing side of things or the incoming side of things? What, what's what been the reception from clubs? Are they are they looking at transfer room as a way of exporting talent primarily or, or also as a, as a hiring tool? I would say 99% of the clubs tells us their objective is to sell players, right? And and this this is not only Venezuela. This is across all Latin America that we get this. They all want to do this. But then they will realize over time that they can also get value by recruiting, right? Getting into international spots in Venezuela mm-hmm. is really important because it gives you a, a different boost economically, right? So competing is also important. So you're going to need your, your, your recruitment as well. So if you ask me, I think we're going to, the main objective of all the clubs will be to sell. We're going to get 
some sales and that's the idea and I'm pretty sure there will be but then there will be a lot of players also coming in and and clubs will slowly see that the return on investment on this kind of tools is not only selling a player it's how many people I met how many uh, deals I facilitated coming in uh, how this player generated an impact on my team and I could have couldn't have met, met uh, the, the, this this player if it wasn't through this so there's many there's many ways but yeah I think for clubs selling, but I think there will be there will be both both sides. I, th- I anticipate really... Jordan. I anticipate a lot of loans coming in. Mm-hmm. I think I think Venezuelan clubs are in a good position to attract some quality players from big teams in Latam that are looking for more playing time. So I anticipate we can get a lot of loans coming in into 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 Venezuela. We uh, there was actually another one, not only Bagayoko, but there was a I I don't remember the name right now, but it was an Argentinian striker that that came. Um, to, to Carabobo, if I'm not wrong as well, and and it, it came through a connection in transfer malls. Uh, Paolo Lassa. Yeah. 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 So what one thing I wanted to I was going to ask you something um, separately. Uh, yes, uh, about one one aspect of the platform I really like. I've been using the platform myself for for three months or so now, um, and one element I really like of it is the sort of the expected transfer value metric that you have. Um, could you tell us a bit about that and and how it works for the for you know the standard listener and and also whether you share the opinion that I do that I think this is something that could add real value to Liga Football because I think uh, one problem Liga Football has alongside of just the general issue of selling players often clubs look to Venezuela to sign free transfer players is is not getting perhaps um, the the money they deserve for the players. Agreed. That's that's a problem, but that comes back to my my first point, which 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 you agreed on, and it's you need to generate an ecosystem that sells. That ecosystem will, as a mass, grow in value, and then you can start selling players. So there's there's a long way to go to start selling players at a very uh, high value, um, but definitely it's something that we can help uh, help help get there. The the XTV is a we call it expected transfer value. What mm-hmm. we do is we work with, it's very well known in the market, the transfer market, right? And and, and you'll know transfer market tells you the player cost this and that. We have a different approach. I'm not saying one is right or one is wrong, but what, what, it's it's just different. Our approach is data-driven. Our approach is made on, our XTB is based on how much long does this player have in his contract? So if, if Kevin Kelsey... Uh, has six months left in his contract, no matter how good, good he is, no matter if he scores goals in Champions League, he's going to be worth zero, right? Because he's going to go on a free. Transfer mm-hmm. mark doesn't take into account this kind of things. We take into account how the league where they're at, they are at, sell. So Kevin Kelsey being a Shakhtar definitely makes him more valuable than if he is on a Slovakian, a Slovakian club that w- wouldn't sell players. So it, it takes into account the level that the player is, is, is playing at and it looks at that uh, on a weekly basis, so it's it's constantly updated. It takes into account how the league he's playing in and how the club he's playing in sells, and it takes into account how much left he has on the contract and similar cases. I'm talking about Kevin Kelsey because he's the most valued Venezuelan player we have currently on on our XTV. Mm-hmm. And what's the value the, of his, by the way? Seven million pounds is uh what we value him in. So yeah, seven million pounds is, is the value we have right now on 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 XTV for him. Okay, interesting. And that's a player that prior to prior to leaving Venezuelan football at the beginning of the year had around 20, 25 professional games. He was still eighteen, around five or six goals in Venezuelan football. It's incredible how your surroundings can can have that effect and um on on your value. And going back to your comment about transfer market, which I again pretty much agree with um one thing i've found frustrating with that and i've had manuel beth on from from transfer market by the way a really a really nice guy and a great friend for the english is, um, is that the i think the the chance of values uh for venezuela and i'm only talking about venezuela because i think it can it's it's fairly good um in in many other parts of the world almost put a ceiling on on what clubs will spend on players because I think I think it's almost sinful, but the amount of um, agents, particularly and secondarily clubs that use transfer market as a guide to to what players should um, cost and what clubs are willing to to spend on players, transfer market limits Venezuela in a way for that. Because if you look at the, I think the most valued player is Yerson Chacon. I think at one point it was four hundred thousand. Now I think it's around six hundred thousand off the top of my head. Um, 
you know, that that limits, that places a ceiling on, on player values. David Martinez, who's going to go for probably multi-million, um, is, is, you know, uh, is he even half a million? I'm not sure. Again, I'm riffing from the top of my head, but I spend a lot of time on these these websites. Going back to the loan system or, or perhaps loans being something you think will really help the Venezuelan market, um, I found find that comment interesting too because as, um, as a, a lover of Venezuelan football, as someone that now lives here because of that love, but as, a, as an outsider that can perhaps um, be, a me, be a bit more critical of things, it frustrates me to see Venezuelan clubs hire players from the third division um, or perhaps even lower of other South American clubs. Of course, Venezuela has its place in Comabal, which is an incredibly competitive um, confederation. Uh, but I think Venezuela is better and deserves better than that. And I think having a better network can see players from higher leagues who need the exposure, who need the game time coming to leagues like Venezuela, particularly to the clubs that are playing group stages of Copa Libertadores, group stages of um, Sudamericana. What I wanted to ask you, um, and perhaps this will lead us into the, the final stages of the podcast, um, is quite a, a pointed question, but please don't take offence. Um, I've heard lots of feedback from agents uh, about Transfer Room. Perhaps these are agents that haven't used Transfer Room, um, and perhaps it is. They see Transfer Room as competition. The most extreme views are that Transfer Room are going to drive agents out of the game or, or drive their business right down. Do you see transfer room as a competition to agents or a facilitation? Definitely not competition. Um, and this is a question, Jordan, we we get a lot. And I'm happy you asked it because because it's important to clarify. I've had this chat also with, with Venezuelan agents about this. And and and, and, and it, it not only happens in Venezuela. I'll, I'll go back a bit, a couple of years to the story of transfer room. And I think this can explain. Transfer room started by being a club to club. Um, uh, platform and during the first four years it was only club to club we and, and when I say we transfer room we quickly realized that agents were a key role here there's always going to be an agent sitting in a negotiation right because the the in, in every football negotiation there's a club buying there's a club selling and there's a player and the player is represented by an agent so he, they, they need to be part of it we welcomed in the June 2021 agencies now we have more than 400 trusted agencies working with us in, in the platform. So right now we've proven for, for over a couple of years that agents and clubs can do business here. What it is, it's a place where you're going to be able to have your players and you'll have like the Instagram blue tick that it says you are the agent. It will say, I am the verified agent of this player. So if you have your portfolio of players, you're going to be able to protect your players and you're in transfer room and you're going to be able to say, this is me. I'm just going to give an example. Southampton was looking for Carlos Alcaraz. They they went into the platform. The club wasn't there. So they, they saw that who was there? The agent was there representing. They saw the profile. They could see the track record of the agency. They could see everything the agency has done. They clicked on declare interest to the agent. A message popped into the agent's uh, uh, um, account, and it ended up happening, being a 13 million euro deal from uh, Racing to the Premier League for Carlos Alcaraz. So this is just a case, but we we have many and many cases of agencies doing business. Now, to to give a, a clear example. If you are a club and you want, I'm going to say whatever, I'm going to say Sotendo, and Sotendo has uh, six months left in his contract, and you're sitting there and you want to hire him, you go into the profile in, in transfer room and you see that he can contact Santos, but the agent is also there. Who are you going to contact? The agent. The guy's got six months left in the contract. You need to speak to the agent because you need to be get your better deal, right? So in football, you need to make a choice all the time. Do I want to speak to the agent? Do I want to speak to the club? But what we want to give our clients in transfer room is transparency and visibility of everything. We want to give you transparency of who really is the is, is the is the is the is the guy representing this uh, this player. We want to give you transparency and visibility of the contract. We're going to give you transparency and visibility and access to be able to reach out either the, either to the club, to the agency, or to both. So I think it, it had that conception just because we started by only being a club to club platform. I always tell agents, what if we had started only with agents? No non-agent would have joined transfer room because they needed we needed the clubs to attract the agents. So there was just mm -hmm. uh, 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 some steps to follow. But 
but that's the only reason why I think agents could be afraid of chance room. It's definitely not. We, we're a player that, that, that we're sitting in the middle and we're helping everyone do more business and connect with mm-hmm. each other. But there's, you don't close deals in chance room. Uh, by, by using this. We, we actually have a couple of agencies from Venezuela working with, with Transform as well. Excellent. And I, I, again, I tend to agree with you. I think it's a facilitation for agents. If, if you're an agent um, and you're not on the platform, your players are still, you know, far more visible than, than by not being on the platform. And you could even say that some of the hard legwork of agents is done for them um, by being on the platform. But I think this is something that some agents... Um, also where their fear comes from and perhaps this isn't applicable around the world but uh you know some agents tell me the worry is if the deal was done club to club um then the club will say to the agent hey you had nothing to do with it we're not paying you any commission that kind of thing um but you know that's outside of the remit of transfer room and it's, it's to be honest nothing really none of your concern um but your your answer is is insightful and perhaps will put some worries to rest um thank you very much uh, before I wrap up the podcast, is there is there anything you would like Venezuelan football to to know about transfer room about the deal? Things to be excited about. I know you said earlier before we started the podcast, there's um there's an event coming up in in Portugal. I think you said, um, and there are going to be some Venezuelan clubs in attendance. Yeah, I think uh, the 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 message we want to send uh, to to Venezuelan football is. We're here to help give this visibility. We're here to help make more deals. We help in two ways. One is the online, which we've spoken in length, the platform, what you can find, the the XTVs, this kind of stuff. But we are also not naive. We know that football moves by meeting people. So we have a calendar of events. We have around seven events per year, um, some of them virtual, some of them face-to-face. Um, and our next face-to-face event will be in Lisbon. These are events where we get together clubs for them to negotiate deals. Um, so it's the, the importance of meeting face-to-face other, other other people. In this case, we already have three clubs. I anticipate we could get we could get one more uh, from Venezuela confirmed to be attending the event. And I think uh, apart from the platform and and doing all this, building relationships are, are are things that last forever. So I think it's it's good for the clubs to to know that they have this as well where they can build relationships with with other people and and you never know we, we've seen a lot of deals coming through uh a couple, some beers after the event when when when, when you meet people at, at those events it's really exciting to see how we sit on a, on the same place 350 clubs and and we currently uh, help uh in in a, in a big percentage of the transfers made uh in in the world excellent and um- Although I didn't plan to ask, um, it just pops into my head when when you were talking about that. I remember that when the deal was announced, it's not just Liga Football, but also Liga Football Two um, that are tied into this deal. But even when when Liga Football was on on Y Scout and uh, previously uh, Instat as well, um, Liga Football Two was was not really on it, um, not in a usable anyway, uh, usable way anyway. Um, is there internal plans between yourself and the league for Liga Football Two to to benefit just as much for, for as Liga Football from this, or in reality, is it going to be something that you need to be in in the Venezuelan Primera Division to to really benefit from? Both both uh, divisions have access to transfer. It's different packages and different. Uh, you, you there will be some more restrictions on 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 the Liga Football those, but restrictions that are thought about and and it won't affect what 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 they'll do they 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 won't know if if a club is looking for a striker for uh, for 10 20 million you know like uh, so, mm-hmm. some things that that they they will still it will be diff- difficult for them to sell players for that value so i think that they they will have a visibility and this was something the league asked for uh they think as a, the league as a whole as a whole and and if if one league is going to join they want both leagues to join and they're, they're thinking on again going back to this ecosystem they're thinking on the whole venezuelan ecosystem and how it can grow and i think it was wise on the league to 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 get both leagues in okay and again i'm going to have one final final question um i keep i keep getting reminded of, of things that i think are relevant um I saw, unfortunately, I, I couldn't see a date on it. Um, you'll probably know. Um, but I saw that Transfer Room went into partnership with uh, a club in Panama, CAI. Um, yep. wh- when when was that? This was uh, one month ago, one month and a half ago. Okay, uh, so okay. very recent. 
Okay, perfect. No, because the question I was going to ask is a lot of people see the leagues as comparable, as similar, although I personally believe that the Venezuelan league is a, sort of a, a step up in the ecosystem from Panama. I was going to ask, um, you know, what successes the, the club had had because it could perhaps be comparative, but obviously one month is also a, a young thing. So if anything, it would be nice to see in tandem how, how Panama and Panamanian clubs benefit from it in comparison to Venezuela, because that could answer some really interesting questions. It's actually the, the, the most, the most uh, um, players sold from one country to another. I mean, Panama and Venezuela do a lot of business. I know we're actually speaking to the Pan Panama League right now. Um, and mm -hmm. we're, they, they are considering doing what Venezuela did, right? And, and uh, not only getting one individual club, like Caracas was, uh, Kai is in, in Panama. But yeah, we're having those conversations and I'm, I'm pretty sure it, it could help a lot. We are actually growing a lot in Central America as well. We... We were, a couple of weeks ago, we welcomed Liga Deportiva La Juelense. We welcomed Saprisa. Uh, we have Real España in Honduras. We're very close on getting our first Guatemalan club. So it's it's uh, it's moving a lot in the Central American region now that you mentioned Panama. Excellent. That's great to hear because, again, it's, it's markets that, that Liga Foot they have, have hired from in recent years and, and seem to be growing. Like we had a Guatemala in, a Guatemalan in the league this season at, um, at Monagas, for example. Panama in recent years has been very strong with players that, you know, played in the World Cup in 2018 or have used League of Football as a, as a stepping stone. Freddy Gondola, for example, the winger, Yadakoyanos first, a small club uh, in, in present terms. Um, then went on to Deportivo Tachara, got the exposure at um, continental level and, and is now playing, you know, good football in Costa Rica. Thank you very much for your time, Diego. This is going to make for a very insightful episode. I really appreciate it. No problem, Jordan. Pleasure to be here and thanks for the invite.